Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in this next video, we're going to learn how to create our own preset so that we can apply the same effect to multiple images. So we'll start here with this image, and there's basically two different ways that you might want to think about creating presets. Presets basically save a selection of sliders, and you can determine how many sliders you want to save in a single preset. So some people prefer to only save, say, the conversion to black and white, or the split toning, or the vignetting, and they want to save them out as individual presets so that they can be applied to different images. Other people prefer to save all of those settings as one single preset because they know that they're going to want to use all of those three sets of sliders in combination together the same way every time. So let me just show you how that's done. So we have this image here and I want to convert it to grayscale. So I'll click on black and white and that will automatically create an auto conversion based on the values of the image. So if I wanted to save this as its own preset, then I could go ahead and click the plus icon next to preset. I would uncheck everything and then just toggle on the auto black and white mix. Then we'll go ahead and name this auto black and white and then click create. You can see that it added it to the user preset folder right here, and if I wanted to apply the auto black and white with a single click to a different image, I could just move to that image and apply it. But I want to create a few other presets first. I'll scroll down to split toning, and here I want to add a sepia tone. I'll hold down the option key and drag the hue slider over until I find the color of sepia that I want. Then I'll increase the saturation and then increase the balance so that I restrict that sepia tone so that it's only affecting the shadow areas of my image. Now if I want to, I can save that as a separate preset. I'll click the plus icon, check none, and then just turn on the split toning, and we'll call it sepia. We'll create that, and we can see that it's been added to my preset list. Now I'll do one more thing, I'll go to effects, and I'll just add a simple post crop vignette. I'll make it a little bit darker, increasing my feather here, and then scrolling back up and saving that as a vignette. I'll check none, and then enable the post crop vignetting and click create. So now we can see we have all three of these separate presets. But if you know that you're always going to want this combination, then you might want to create a preset that contains all of those sliders. So this will be my sepia with vignette preset, and I want to make sure that not only does it have the post crop vignetting, it also has the split toning as well as the black and white mix. Now when I choose create, all of those sliders will be affected if I apply this preset to another image. So let's move to this next image here and we'll go through the presets. Here was the auto black and white preset that only converts it to grayscale. Here's the sepia tone. But let's go ahead and reset this file for a moment. What if I just added the sepia tone without the black and white? Well, you can see that now it's just adding a color cast. Or let's undo that, Command Z. Let's add just the vignette to this image. So I think you can see how just saving one set of sliders gives you a little bit more flexibility because you might just want to apply a vignette to one image or a sepia tone to another. But again, if you know that you're going to apply a certain combination, then go ahead and save them all together. And when I click sepia with vignette, it would apply all three of those changes at once. Now, I've created a number of presets. I'll just scroll up here and show them to you. So I have a number of presets for converting to black and white, for toning with a single color. And the nice thing about these is that you can just roll your cursor over any of the options and get a preview of what that preset would look like in the navigator panel. So for example, here's the sepia tone that I have or the blue tone. And if you decide you like that, you could click on that and you'll notice that by clicking on the blue tone because I'm in this toning single color preset folder that I created, it didn't change the vignette and it didn't change the black and white conversion. It only changed the sliders that were saved in that preset, which happened to be the sliders that were in 
this area right here, the split toning area. So I mentioned these presets because I also have them available on my blog. My blog is blogs.adobe.com slash jcost. And if you just do a search in the upper right hand corner for .zip for zip, you can go ahead and download these presets and there's installation instructions in the blog post there so you can install them and play around with them yourself. So there you have it, an easy way to create presets so that you can apply them to multiple images at a time. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.